So this is chapter 33, video number three. Uh, this one is going to be on a couple of things, a couple of comments on the multiplier. There is something called the tax multiplier, which works differently than the regular multiplier. I'm going to explain that first. And then near the end of the video, I'll explain something called the balanced budget multiplier. So first, let's remind ourselves what the multiplier is. The multiplier equation is 1 over 1 minus the MPC. Remember that from an earlier chapter. So if the MPC is, uh, if the MPC is 0.75, that's what I'm going to work with. What's the MPC is 0.75, meaning that any increase in income People in this society tend to spend 75% of it and save 25% of it. The MPS would be 0.25, if you recall. So if the MPC is 0.75, that means that we have 1 over 1 minus 0.75. That's 1 over 0.25. And that means that the multiplier is 4 in this economy. So that's the uh, data that we're going to use in this example. Let me show you what happens if government spends an extra $100 billion in this society. So government spending goes up by $100 billion. Okay, Government spending increases by $100 billion. There would be a multiplier effect on that. The multiplier is 4. That would mean we would get an increase of uh, $400 billion in GDP, okay? An increase of $400 billion in GDP because the government spent an extra $100 billion. Now, remember that we said that expansionary fiscal policy, which this is, is either increase government spending or decrease taxation. What if, could, could we get the same result by decreasing taxes by $100 billion? Well, let's see what happens with taxes. We're gonna decrease taxes by $100 billion. But the problem is that leaves people with an extra $100 billion. What do people in this society do when they get extra money? They save 25% of it, don't they? So some of that money, um, $100 billion times 0.25 equals $25 billion is going to go into savings. They're not, those people aren't going to spend that money. They're going to, they're going to tuck it away. And savings is taking money out of the economy. So part of our tax cut, trying to give people more money, well, we didn't give them a hundred billion more dollars. We gave them only 75 billion more dollars because that's what they're going to spend. So the 100 billion times 0.75 is $75 billion in increased consumer spending, consumption. Ran out of room over here. Okay, so consumption spending is going to increase by $75 billion. So C goes up by $75 billion times the multiplier, and that's only a $300 billion increase in GDP. All right, so here's what we've got. An increase in government spending of $100 billion, full multiplier effect, $400 billion hit in on in, into GDP, increase in GDP. The same cut, $100 billion cut in taxes, is going to increase consumer spending by only $75 billion, because 25% of it will be saved, which results in an increase of GDP of $300 billion. And that means what we can do here is just go back to this original um, $100 billion tax cut and realize this. The tax multiplier. Here's the thing right here, okay? The tax multiplier is the regular multiplier minus one. 
Okay, so the regular multiplier, 4, minus 1. So whenever you know that the regular multiplier is 4, the tax multiplier in that economy is going to be 3. Now, if we go back here and we say that this MPC is 0.9, that would be 1 over uh, 1 minus 0.9, 1 over 0.1, that would be a, a multiplier of 10. What would be the tax multiplier if the regular multiplier is 10? The tax multiplier would be 9. Okay, so that's how you calculate the tax multiplier. All right, uh, one more thing, and that is a balanced budget multiplier. What if somebody in Congress says, all right, if you guys are going to increase government spending by $100 billion, how are you going to pay for it? Well, if you tell me that we're going to increase taxes by $100 billion, so now we're going to switch this around, and we're going to say that uh, the people in Congress have decided that they want what we call a balanced budget um, expansion of the economy. And this is what I call the balanced budget multiplier. And I refer to it frequently as just the the BBM, the Balanced Budget Multiplier. Let's see what happens. Now, since I reverse this, I, I, I say we're going to spend $100 billion more, we're going to tax $100 billion to pay for the government spending, you would think that that would have no impact on the economy. The GDP will stay the same. It won't change at all because government is giving money away and they're taking it away at the same time. Giving and taking the same amounts, it will be a wash, right? No, it won't that $100 billion government spending, it's the full multiplier in this case, in this scenario four. Okay, I'm going back to the, to the uh, MPC of 0.25 and the multiplier of four. So we have an increase of $400 billion in the GDP. Okay, that's upward pressure of $400, $400 billion in GDP spending, but the tax, the increase in tax is gonna take money away from people. So now what's going to happen is uh, as we tax money away from people, people are going to pay part of that tax out of their savings. 25% of that tax they're going to pay, take out of their savings. So savings is going to go down by $25 billion, And consumer spending will go down by the rest of it, $75 billion. They'll, they'll spend $75 billion less because their taxes went up by $25 billion, $25 the tax went up by 100 billion, I'm sorry. 25 billion they paid out of savings, 75 billion they, they reduced their consumption. So now consumption spending is down. We reverse this, okay? Down by 75 billion times the multiplier, that's a downward pressure on GDP of 300 billion, okay? Now I'll erase this tax multiplier stuff and let's see what happens. We have an upward pressure of 400 billion in the economy minus the downward pressure of 300 billion in the economy. And what do we have? An increase of 100 billion in the economy. So this balanced budget plan of Congress to increase government spending by 100 billion and increase taxes by 100 billion will result in 100 billion increase in GDP. Okay, now what that means is you did government spending of 100 billion, tax of 100 billion. You got an increase in government and in total GDP at the end of the year of 100 billion. The balanced budget multiplier is always equal to one. The balance, it doesn't matter whether you have a different multiplier. The balanced budget multiplier, when you work this out, will always be equal to one. So keep those things in mind as we go through this.